Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. <laughs> oh, my God, don't stop now. With your hosts, Brian, John, and Elaine. <laughs> Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your host, Brian Coddington. Join my fellow co-hosts and filmmakers, John and Lane Woolscroft. Oh, I have brain leftover shivers. Oh, I got, I I got the brain shits. Okay. I think I need my brain removed. It's inflamed. Uh, yeah, yeah. You got an yeah, inflamed brain right next to a, a busted up asshole. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're on episode uh, 184, uh, and this week we are returning to our long-standing series. We're now in part part three of this long-standing series of analyzing the work of one techno Jesus God alien named Neil Breen with our Breen Apocalypse part three. This week we're gonna be looking at I am here. Dot dot dot. Now. You know, that was very accurate with the title. Computer expert. Computer. Sex god. Genius. He's a sex god in this one, too, by the way. Yeah. K- kind of, yes. Yeah. He is. It's yeah, he's true. Literal Jesus. Re- I, Jesus. I was going to say, he is <laughs> he is God, Jesus, alien. Greatest man who ever lived. Man who's attached a motherboard and ram chips to his body. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's got it all in this one, except for the, the genius level intellect. That one's not in here. And there is, unfortunately... He doesn't need it. He already knows well, that all. <laughs> he John, knows all. John, but, I have a very serious question for you. What? How many more of these goddamn movies are left? There's a lot. Two? Two? There's no. more than one? No, I think there's more. Well, there's Doesn't two he have more? That we have available to him. Oh, I think okay. I think he just finished his, his sixth film, but it's oh, not out. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I'll, I'll have to check IMDb. Fucker. <laughs> fucker, oh, fucker, God, fucker. I'm exhausted. Fucking oh. bullshit. These are not midnight movies. These are real feature-length independent movies. I wish I'd never yeah, heard the yeah. words and Neil Breen. And TikToks are just oh. short films. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> or Quibbies. Fuck you. Quibbies yeah. are the new yeah. thing. Is that what it is? You know what? I keep seeing the Quibbies pop up like for advertisements on Facebook. What the fuck is a Quibby? So I didn't know for the longest time, and I actually reveled in not We're knowing. We're all so but old I, right now. What is a Quibby? It's, it stands for Quick Bits. It's a bunch of short films that I don't think any longer than 10, 10 to 10 minutes. minutes. I think it's just 10. And you can only watch it on your phone. So it's it's a streaming service that's only on your phone, and it's all short films. Yeah, and actually, I don't even okay. feel like we're old people so because I don't think it's, so it's like you, it's old you, yeah, younglings. It's, it's YouTube with a, time, with a time limit. Yeah, and that you can only watch on one device. Well, who the so, fuck wants that? No one. Yeah. It's so dumb. I get to see a bunch of out of touch eighty year old executives. You know what the kids want? <laughs> Something that's just on their phone. Well, the, honestly, the the um the owner or creator or whatever um he's been blaming its absolute flop on the coronavirus. So. Which, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. If it's the coronavirus's fault. Yeah. That well, yeah. Your if there's ever a time, didn't you can think just stay at home this. and watch. Just like stay at home and watch <laughs> shit on your phone. Yeah. yeah. Because everyone watches shit on the phone. It's like, yeah, we know that. But at the same time, they're also watching shit on their TVs or their iPads or their computers. So the fact that you've basically hamstrung your distribution to just the the phone makes no fucking sense. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. But I mean, if there was ever a time to just like dick around on your phone and do nothing else. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, you're kind of handcuffing yourself on that one. You know? I guess. I guess. But- anyway, enough about quibbies. <laughs> Let's and how out of touch trash. we are. Let's talk, Let's talk about, about more hot garbage. garbage. So, so he's got he's got what another one he's working on, and then he's also got a fucking master class. Wait, no, why? Yeah, oh, you didn't know to. about this. I might have to buy the master class, guys. We might oh. have to sit through that. Well, wait. Price I, is going to depend heavily. Since okay, we have so a shared so bank account, so sir. Lane, you didn't know about this. No, what? Okay, okay. So he announced. I I posted this on. I believe I posted this on our, our, our Facebook page. I'll tell you what. If it was this um, week, Twitter. my... It, my it nine, wasn't this week. Okay. I was going to say, my nine to five job this week has been insane. I, I understand that. It, it wasn't this week. So he posted a trailer, which for Neil, a trailer is not a trailer. It's more like a 10 to 15 minute you know, interview with him. 
Yeah, um, of him talking. Of him talking. Camera. And he basically talks about how he's created this five film retrospective about all of his movies and it's it's he's billing it as a master class just like oh you see like master class with martin scorsese and it pops up and he's talking about directing this is what this is the neil breen master class yeah. and he's Aaron like Sorkin's uh, master class on yeah, screenwriting you yeah, know? yeah yeah <laughs> and it's and just him talking it's ju- apparently it's just him he's selling it for what did it what is it john like 300 bucks what it's oh, yeah. something astronomical. You're absolutely not buying it. I was going to say, Lane, you, you'd probably be like, listen, I look at a bank statements. We ain't affording $300 for a fucking Neil Breen movie. Listen, you, if you want to like... Somebody has to have pirated it if by you, now, right? If you want to sell some of your like... Not Neil's shit. You know, can't pirate his shit. If you want to sell some of your like, you know, special emissions to pay for it, I can't stop you. But <laughs> good God, you're not taking that from the account. Wow. Yeah, yeah, but... Uh, yeah, he he billing he's billing this as his his you know five part master class in how to make a movie. So it's he, he literally says, Does he mean that I've been able to distribute to theaters worldwide and I've been able to edit and I will show you how I edit my films. Dude, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. So yeah, his five part master class that he's making oh on how to be you know, a, a hacker genius? Is that what it's I, about? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> or how hacker to be genius. a windbag how, twat? twat? <laughs> how to be successful in filmmaking. I mean, he, technically Jesus. he has been, but I know, know, and that's what's sad about it. That's what makes me angry. You know, the oh, thing is, my like, Lord. The, the thing about guys like Neil and like Tommy Wiseau is that they, they think they're making the next great American film, but I think that one thing that separates, say, like Tommy Wiseau from Neil Breen is Neil Breen wants to make like the film that will open your eyes and change your your life, while Tommy Wiseau just wanted to be famous. He just yeah. wants to make big budget Hollywood movie. <laughs> so when everybody no laughed, Mickey Mouse stuff, no so Mickey Mouse stuff. Everybody laughed at Tommy Wiseau, like he took it in stride because he's like, I'm getting my fame anyways. So Plus even he if had money laughing at me and like attention, yeah, I'm getting attention. Neil Breen. I think has shut himself off from the idea that everyone's laughing at him. Like, and he just keeps making movie after movie. And like this one would yeah. be the one that like gets people to notice that I'm the greatest mind in, in, in movie making today. He's not, I, he's so <laughs> blissfully naive of his own shortcomings. It's, it's, it's astonishing because at I, least Tommy owns it, but this guy, he's so well, unaware. I think he, of his ineptitude. I think he mm-hmm. might actually be, the greatest B movie director of all time. Whoa! I, and he has to be. And and th- the reason why, John, is exactly to your point. You know, when we look at B movies, like we look at Troll Two and we look at The Room, you know, u- ultimately they're B movies because the filmmaker believes their hype so hard that it shows through. And Neil is. The only filmmaker I know who actually believes that he is the greatest filmmaker of all time, that he believes, yes, as you just mentioned, that his films are speaking to real issues and that they're competently put together and successful. Okay? He actually believes it. 100%. He does think he's way greater than he is. He, he does. He, he, he literally believes like he's a James Cameron. Okay, um, and I think because of that, that makes him the greatest B movie director of all time, because of how hard he actually believes his own bullshit. And that's the thing; it's just because you cast a movie and you rent an equipment and you hired crew and you spent money and you technically filmed everything you wrote on the page doesn't mean that you've made a good film. It just means you've made a film. <laughs> you made a film. I mean, yeah. and, and don't get me wrong. Don't be wrong. I've said this. If you've been able to do all of that, that's a success to some degree. Whether it's good or not is 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 up for debate. You know, I, I would never begrudge anyone who actually goes out and makes a movie because making a movie is hard. But the whole point of making a movie and keeping making films and being a filmmaker is that eventually you get to a point where they're good. 
<laughs> and <laughs> Neil is the master of the diminishing return because every one of his films that comes out is progressively worse. I'm, I'm telling you, I see no improvement. Well, there is no I, improvement. I will disagree uh, with you guys a little bit on this. Okay. Like, I, will, I will say, you know, we said, I said this before we went on the air. His movies got centimeters better. Like, I would say this yeah. one at least isn't 95% stock footage like his first film. And I will say, dude, we did these movies because <laughs> the third one was available. So we did three, one, two so yeah. far. The third movie, Faithful Findings, is the best out of these three, <laughs> it, which it's like yeah. saying it, it's the least smelliest turd, you know, in the toilet bowl. <laughs> right. It, it um, has a little Febreze thrown on it. Yeah. It's still a turd, but it's yeah. it's got Febreze. Yes, I don't know. This one had a lot of found footage, I thought, still, too. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, He's yeah, still it, buying it, his it had found found. Fo- I think the difference, John, was it, it like it had found footage, but with this one, it, it was a lot of recycled shots. You know, and I'm sure we're going to get into this, but like he filmed one thing and then just decided I'm going to throw it in there five times. Yeah, I I noticed that too, Brian. It made me crazy. Yeah, but I I think with this one he discovered, um, like digital stock footage, like like ones of like simulations and oh yeah and shit mm-hmm. like that, and, and and discovered After Effects maybe. Maybe he discovered it, or maybe he hired someone who do- doesn't know what the fuck they're doing to do it. Although, knowing the type of person that Neil is, that he puts out, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to do it himself, which is why it looks like garbage. <laughs> uh, but then he saw it and went, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I'm good at everything. Um, but but I, I agree, you know, Fateful Findings is probably his Citizen Kane, okay? Because that's as good <laughs> oh as it's ever going to get. It's, it's seriously, <laughs> it, it, it's so it, 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 it's never going to get any better. Um, I Maybe haven't seen nine. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't seen I haven't seen pass through, and I haven't seen Twisted Pair. I'm assuming they're terrible films too. I mean, we're gonna um, eventually see them, Brian. Are you excited? <laughs> well, you don't. Own, I don't think you do. You own Twisted Pair? Yep. Okay. And, <laughs> yeah, because he he has Twisted, Twisted Pair, Pair, and then I think that actually is it. Pastor and Twisted Pair. Those are the last ones. Twisted Pair was, tw- was 2018. And then his five film retrospective <laughs> documentary. <laughs> I'm sorry. $300 oh, for that shit? You yeah, it, be, it's expensive. You've it, got to be kidding me. That's yeah. insane. So let's dive into uh, I am here dot, 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 dot now. now. And the reason why you have to have the dot, dot, dots in there, not just say I am here now, is because he actually... Puts that shit in the title. Yeah, you guys might think we're crazy for doing that, but no, it's it's very important. As part of the title, it's very important. Um, it's I, like a I continuation of a tweet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I don't know how we're gonna get through this one. I actually did write down notes before we we went uh, live here with recording because you know <laughs> I was working on some stuff before uh, last night when I was watching this. And I had this on in the background, and I'm like, I don't know how, how I'm gonna be able to review this because it I doesn't make any fucking sense. As I recommend with all Neil Breen works, um, I was drinking when you I was watching it. You have to drink. It. You just can't. You just you cannot. You got to take do the edge off, man. You just can't <laughs> well, do it. So. I said like an like an alcoholic or like someone with a problem. Like I would just, say that anyone who is an alcoholic off, needs can't. to not watch these movies. <laughs> yeah, because it'll just make you drink harder. It'll just be like, oh, it's it. so bad, you guys. Um, so bad. that here's the tricky thing with Neil is like. You know, you should watch this with like a party of like ten or twelve people. Yes. Everybody's drinking and laughing and having a good time. Now the thing is, like, we're watching it for the show, so it's just usually Lane and I, and also you know we're in quarantine, so quarantine can't have right. ten to twelve people over to watch a Neil Breen movie. Uh, so yeah, it's extra hard when you're just watching it, you know, as two people. Uh, and you have to watch it analytically so you can talk about it. Well, podcast. at least it's you and me. Like, at least yeah. we didn't have to watch it alone. Like each of us, you know, and poor I Brian. Did. I yeah. Did. Sorry, Brian. Because Lauren won't watch this with me. She's already uh, Lauren's so like, a smart woman. She's like, I'm not, I'm not doing <laughs> it. Your wife she's is like, a that's, smart lady. That's your thing. You, you do. It. I said, okay, that's fine. That's <laughs> cool. I get it. <laughs> it makes so much sense though, that Neil plays uh, an alien in this movie because there's never a moment in this movie 
where anybody has a human interaction the way human beings Mm-mm. would actually it's, interact with each other. There are no humans in this. And the dialogue is not the way anybody talks to each no. other. It's so strange. And no. I feel that Neil has to have almost a Hitchcockian control over his films because, like, I don't think all these actors are as weird as Neil. I mean, they just tried out for a movie. Right. They came to a casting call. So he has to just train them to behave like he does. He does the Breen method. The because Breen you- method. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh. you watch this movie and it's like a fever dream. You know, you like I'm like, yo, oh, I had the stream where these two women took off their tops and were splashing each other in the pool for this crooked executive. Sisters. It- not yes. just women. Oh, yeah. Twins. Two sisters. They were twins. twins. It didn't look alike. But, like, it wasn't, like, how people acted because it was a dream. And people were always like, yeah, no, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I know yeah. what you mean. I know Dreams what you mean. Weird, Dreams yeah. are so yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there were baby heads in the desert. <laughs> okay. I got I to gotta start with that one. I got to start with that one. I got I got to start with that one. So this movie opens up in the fucking desert. Okay. Because... You know what? Lives in Vegas, and you don't need ne- permits in the Neo desert. Probably, in, yeah, you don't. You don't. I'm pretty sure you don't. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's considered like a national park, so you can yeah go in there, whatever. The fuck public land. Um, got it. And we see this cross, and it then dissipates, and Neo Breen's stinky ass feet hit the ground. And uh, can we talk the- about how long his toes are for a minute. The, Anybody? Yeah. Anybody? <laughs> I, I mean, I wasn't really paying attention Not to, to it. Be Lane. A weirdo, but I, his I toes- assume. It was assumed, really long and weird. Well, I assumed you were looking at it because you're just like, man, I really hate this film. I wonder what I can look at. Oh, look at that. Look at those ugly ass toes. I, they just struck me as weird. <laughs> they were Giant long. Talons. Yeah. So uh, Neil Breen is a techno Jesus zombie alien god person. And I say that like because he literally has computer hardware, like RAM chips and motherboards attached to his body and this is fourth grade intellectualism isn't it like, yes yeah. what if, like jesus was like also a robot <laughs> what if he was like a computer inside <laughs> yeah and and it, i gotta say this this opening sequence if you want to call it that is like 15 minutes long it's exhausting it it's is so a long bad. because he keeps reusing the same shots over and over and over mm-hmm. and over and over mm-hmm. again and and you're like this looks like some art house shit. And honestly, that's exactly the best way to to describe it. Is it's um, some art house crap. And I think this movie is an art house film. I think this is his art house take. I, mean, I don't think this think is. Does he think that he's being artistic, or did he think that he could reuse the shots and no one would notice? I uh, I think in Ooh. his mind, I, here's what I li- I think. I think in his mind, he spent a lot of money on that that z- alien mask. Okay, <laughs> spent a lot of money on that, and. There's not a whole lot of brain in this movie compared to his other films. It's true. Okay. Was it a mask, Brian, or was it makeup? I mean, it was fuck. I mean, I think I think in the end it was a mask. I think in the beginning parts it was might have been makeup. It looked like both like cuz th- towards the end you get another alternate shot of that mask with the one sister who's an activist and part-time hooker. Um and <laughs> I'm not kidding when I say this. This is part of the <laughs> script. Um, and it looks like a mask at that point. But earlier in the film, it looked like makeup. So I don't know if he just, you know, had the mask and said, hey, we're going to do makeup this time around. But the point I'm trying to get is that this movie doesn't have a whole lot of brain in it. Like his techno Jesus God alien. Yeah, like um, his face really isn't seen a lot. Right. But, but because of that, he has to put himself in the beginning for like 10 to 15 minutes reusing the same footage in the desert, which has, yes, as you mentioned, Lane, baby heads. Like like baby doll heads. <laughs> baby heads, I'm serious. Yeah. I, I don't get it. Like, Glasses. I really don't. And well, there's an orb, too. There's some glass orb shit that you're getting that this is the destroyer of the planet. Because basically, Neil comes to Earth uh, to destroy humanity because of global warming. And greedy politicians and Wall Street. And evil insurance companies. And evil insurance companies. <laughs> Basically, How could I forget them? His bingo card of people he hates in every <laughs> one of his movies. Like, And I'm I'm seriously worried. I'm that surprised you haven't made a bingo card of Neil Breen movies. Because <laughs> honestly, that this that there is a party game right there. 
That would be the really Neil fun, Breen actually, bingo the card. One. That'd be really fun for the next one. Yeah. I seriously fear that this man is unhinged because, like, his movies keep ratcheting it up. Like, the third one, people are literally shooting themselves in the face while he's pontificating at, at That's a podium. True. Like, he, <laughs> I think if he wasn't making these movies, he would be a mass shooter. Well, he'd be a danger to himself and others. Yeah. Let's yeah. just say. Yeah. Maybe we do want to say these are our opinions. We're not, John. we're not yeah. saying that Neil is a mass shooter. We're just saying these are our opinions. No, we're, <laughs> just, we're just saying he's a little cray. We're just saying the he's a little department at the Cinema Psycho Show would like to announce that these do not reflect those of the Cinema Psychos and Cinema Psychos brand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we get Space Techno Jesus who walks in the desert and then it, it see here's I'm trying to follow the plot and that, that's the problem. There is no plot. Well, this is his David Lynch moment, right? Like yeah. But, but he then he goes to Las Vegas, right? That's where Space Techno Jesus goes. Yeah. You'd think that Space Techno Jesus would have had a nicer car. Yeah, and where did it, well, well, oh, I forgot that he did kill some junkies to get the car. He just made them sleep. Yeah. He didn't kill them. They're dead. He, can, he just made them go night night. No, yeah, no, they're dead. <laughs> he killed them. He's on a and, rampage, <laughs> and then he takes their clothes off. Yeah, yeah, he takes their cl- well, just the dude. He doesn't take the girls' clothes off. No, no. Which wait, I gotta, I gotta make a a. a a comment about every female in this film. Um, <laughs> did, did Neil just think buttons don't exist on shirts for women? Because <laughs> it isn't me, Lane, but like, is every woman in this wearing a blouse that is just like trying to show the titties? I mean, I didn't really notice because I don't, I, I don't did. necessarily, <laughs> <laughs> I, did I don't necessarily I notice tried. that. <laughs> It's weird. It's weird because like we'll be out and, and about. And I think just like you guys are like drawn, like like you know hetero guys are just drawn to them because like we'll just be someplace like totally boring um, before Corona would hit, you know. And John would be like, "Did she have like an abnormally big chest?" And I'll be like, "Oh, dude, did she? I didn't notice. Like I I don't even know. Like I well, it's just I, like totally oblivious to I it. I just like it. It looked like every woman in this movie did not have a, a fully buttoned shirt. Well, All I will. I will say that 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 one like junkie gal, her Which one? um, the, the, the like in the beginning, the, the junkie, about, yeah. the one. Oh yeah, about. the the one in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will say like she didn't have a button shirt um because I remember those tank tops from like two thousand nine and they were just like awkward and terrible because they were yeah. so boxy. So I do remember. I do remember like the fashion statement <sighs> from then. You could I, tell that Neil has a type. Because every woman <laughs> looks exactly the same in this movie. Yeah, yeah, they're like it's kind of like an elven like. Like tiny, like really small face type. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed. I noticed <laughs> that. Like cute, Elvin. like cute. You know what I mean? Cute, but like kind of ethereal looking. Elvin. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying so, to make a point here, sir. But he he steals their car after killing them. They're not asleep. They're dead. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess if you leave them out in the desert, oh, for, they're fucking to be dead. In exposure, I guess yeah. if they weren't dead, yeah. they would be yeah. soon. Well, I mean, he's he's here to kill all of humanity. So it makes sense that he just starts with two junkies. Um <laughs> and and then he drives to Vegas and we get the weirdest stock footage drive because it's and this is what makes no sense to Neil Breen's films. He references plot points without actually saying what's going on. Okay? So get his manifesto. But, well, no, no, you don't, because he doesn't even say what like like there's literally a scene where he's driving in Vegas and we get some shot stock shots of Vegas or stuff that he shot outside of his window while he's driving. And then it cuts <laughs> to a group of politicians or s- bad people <laughs> who are just yeah. saying, yeah, we took care of that thing. Oh, my God. What was the line that you loved, I don't even John, know what they, like, the line out loud? Like, we stopped uh, that bill on global warming and then we kicked <laughs> a puppy and set a baby on fire because we're bad people. No, like they called themselves like the politicians or something, John. You like you died. No, I remember yeah, distinctly. Yeah. You like crapped your pants. Thankfully, we as politicians stuff the political bill and the political house. As, and it's like, like they called themselves like crooked politicians yeah. or something. I thought John was going to poop his pants. He laughed <laughs> they so could, hard. Crooked politicians. Like the the lack of research. That is done in these movies is staggering, and just oh, like man, the the dialogue and the way that people actually don't talk, well, it was they, incredible. Some of the mistakes in this movie, 
like you, I feel like you almost have to go out of your way <laughs> to to make that bad of decisions. Oh, it's true. It's, like like there's there's a scene where Neil is and it might be early on in the movie, but there's a scene where Neil is like holding the skull and he repeats the line. And I just kept thinking to myself, I'm like, why didn't you just cut or like because he says two lines in the in the movie where I, I I forget what the actual lines are, but but he he basically is saying the exact same thing. It's almost like an alternate take where he has one in the wide and then he has one close up. And I'm just like, why don't you just punch in on the second line instead of repeat the line over and over again? Yeah, and that's just, that's a simple simple mistake that it, you you can't tell me that you thought. I have to say the end of that last line three times for emphasis. Like, but I get what you're saying, John. It, it, there's things in here that you almost have to go your way to be bad at. Well, even I got I got one for you. What about he had one sound effect of screaming? Oh and yeah, didn't, and didn't record any like new original screams. So he'll just loop it, and you'll hear ah. Uh, uh, you know, it's the same sound over, and everybody screams exactly the same way. Yeah. There's a lot of mindless violence in this movie. Oh yeah, oh, we so haven't even touched that one. Yeah. So we hear all this, yeah, screaming. You know, <sighs> like it's the same scream over and over. Like, and you, there's one scene where a bunch of gang members are fighting, and you hear Neil, who's supposed to not be Neil in the moment, and just be one of the gang members, go, "Hey, knock it off, quit monkeying around. We need to get down to business." <laughs> so. He knows how to do ADR. Mm-hmm. He could, yeah. You think he could have had somebody record a scream? So he yeah. has like you know variety, but <laughs> but but anyway, getting back to this scene here. Okay, so they're driving around. He's driving around Vegas. We cut to the politicians being bad, uh, and then we cut to a shot of the two girls <laughs> in the pool. Uh, oh yeah, and like reasons? it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. Like, well, and we we see them again. Artsy, like, guys. like we we're gonna see them again. Like that's the- this is where he's artsy because he's showing you scenes from later in the movie because it's not it's not linear. He's like he's like Tarantino. No, Time he's not. Is a construct. <laughs> I guess. No, no. Y- no you have not. to be good before you can say you're you're, you're Tarantino. And you really upset Brian John. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just saying. Like, I get it. This is him setting up. I'm gonna visit every one of these horrible people stories and you're going to watch it and we're going to be around for the ride. Yeah. It just really didn't seem like that. Like it just didn't seem like it made any goddamn sense. It's like like, the most generically awful people on the planet. But like, I don't know. It just seemed like people were doing some maybe not okay things for like some decent reasons. There was one point where a guy (laughs) Pushed a guy in a wheelchair out of his wheelchair. I, I have to get. We'll get to way. that part. Well, I obviously wasn't talking about that asshole. I meant like that one girl who's trying to take care of her baby and had to like start part time hooking. Okay? Oh, well, speaking of that, I want to get to that one first. I clearly that's, wasn't that's talking our, about the wheelchair pusher. That's our that's our first first trip down horrible person lane in Las <laughs> Vegas. Um, is the story of two girls, both twins. One of them is a... But they're not twins. They're not twins. One of them is a hooker. We don't know that she's only doing this part-time, but she just is a hooker, which that's fine. Hey, sex work, that's real work. She's, um, like, she's like an you know Uber driver, you know what I mean? Just like yeah. a little side hustle. She's a puber. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, John. How long have you been sitting on that pun? A puber. Just came to me. Really? Yeah. I'm very impressed. But she's got a sister who loses her job and is trying to take care of her baby, and we see that because she's pushing a baby carriage with a fake child in it. Um, <laughs> yeah, fake baby you doll. That too. <laughs> okay. And the sister's like, you're fucking hot. Which I'm like, what? what? Okay. Oh, no. I, Brian, like, I think I got it. I think I got it. Awkward. <laughs> like, you, you should take up stripping or hooking. Every girl in Vegas does it. And you should totally do it because we're great. And I'm hot. We're hot. I I think those were the last. I think you yeah. know that. I think you. Yeah, it. It, it is, and it's it's just kind of strange that your sister would say you're fucking hot, and you I think should he forgot have they were sex. sisters because I think he had a boner while shooting and forgot <laughs> that they were sisters. <laughs> the blood wasn't in his brain at the yeah. time, <laughs> or the planet he lives on. Incest is fine. I, I guess so, <laughs> yeah. but it could be, could be. They they end up moving like walking to a gang of guys, and. Like greedy, corrupt politician guys there too, 
And the guys are like looking them over going like, oh, I can't wait to bang this one. And that's where the scream comes into play because one of them just up and shoots another one in the, wrist. the gang leader. Yeah. yeah, the gang leader shoots the one in the wrist. Um, <clears throat> and that's where we get the really ridiculous scream. And then somehow the two girls end up with corrupt businessman at his pool. Yeah, that was that was and, odd. Yeah. And one thing I just like yeah. to I'd like to call out real quick on um the Breen the Breen the Breen. The Breen. The Breener. Um I don't understand why when he does these effects, like when he goes to the trouble of doing the effects, um, you know, with like blood and stuff, mm-hmm. I don't know why he bothers doing a blood effect when he's rarely so consistent to do it that like it doesn't have blood in every shot do you guys notice that like he'll do it in the close-up yeah but then i don't know if he if he shoots the wides another day but the wide never has the blood (laughs) yeah probably notice that it's so strange my 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 guess is he he probably shoots like he doesn't take the scene and just you know line out that hey on this day we're shooting this scene and i need to have all of these pieces to do this scene Mm-hmm. Um. Instead, he does kind of a mishmash. Big shocker there. Of <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm gonna Plus do all these love. different scenes. We're gonna do close-ups here, and oh yeah, we're gonna do the blood thing here. And then when you come back to that scene, and you realize in editing, oh shit, I need a wide to cut to. Which again, I'm like, why are you even giving a shit about editing since you're not good at it? Um, <laughs> but and none of your editing makes none any of your sense. editing really makes sense, and that's so when we true. get the whole like I didn't plan. Like it just it just shows to me a lack of planning, if anything. Well, um, too. I mean, a lot of the crew, like I, I would just venture a guess that like you know he doesn't he doesn't know anybody in, in the film industry, you know, or not just the industry, but just if other filmmakers in general. So like this, he's the only one that has a passion here. So he hires outside people, and while like. I feel no matter what the project and like and you can get a sense of whether you're on something really good or really bad right away. Like, yeah, you still give it your all. But I imagine a lot of these like say the cinematographers like he realizes in five minutes what he's working on and says, well, <laughs> I expose the camera correctly. That's all I'm doing. I'm not going to say, hey, Neil, he should have a little blood on his shirt or, hey, maybe we should try a different camera angle or, you know, or that's that doesn't match. No, he's just like. I'll put the camera where Neil tells me. I'll expose it. I'll cash my check, and I'll get the fuck out of here. And I think that's every crew member who's not Neil. You're probably right. Yeah. yeah. And it's weird to right. me that he has a crew, because who the hell would stick around for that shit? Yeah. I mean, crew every movie. Yeah. I'm looking at his IMDb, and he has... His, his sound guy's name is Thanos. Ah! <laughs> yeah. What? No, seriously. He's With got a snap of his that's finger. It's not real. <laughs> I think that actually is a real person. Yeah, it is a real person. Wow. Thanos Panagia Talo Taros. Wow. Um, but the fact that he has a sound person, that's hilarious. One um, of his movies has in the in the end credits lighting and it says none. Oh no, he, he, I don't think he, he has lighting no in one. this. Yeah. No, he doesn't he has a cinematographer though. He has a call him a cinematographer, he calls him camera operator. Well, because Neil's probably the true cinematographer <laughs> in his mind. You know? It's his vision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, we get this really awkward pool scene that makes no sense at all. This isn't how people act. No, this is not how human no. beings act it, or talk or move through the world or any of that. Well, well let, let me good. let me let me walk you through this, okay? <laughs> so, so our our, our two, I guess you want to call them heroines. Um, you know, after getting picked up by corrupt businessman at the gang shootout, <laughs> um, they're a treat for him, right? They're he, a treat. You know, he's, he's just like, like crooked. he's crooked. So he's got this pool, and he's gonna have them like. Get in the pool and take off the tops. It's and, the you same know, pool from Faithful Findings. By it, the way, it, yes, it, it seems is. like it. It's, yeah. it's <laughs> the same pool. It is the same pool. That's the only pool Neil has access to. Okay, it's it's his <laughs> probably pool. his. Yeah, it's, it's his probably pool. his pool. Um, which fine. You know, that's great. You got an awesome pool. Good for you, Caterings buddy. Caterings inside cheese sandwiches. <laughs> oh, you mean like grilled cheese? No, just no, craft just cheese. singles on bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they're in this pool, and one they. 
it, it's it's about mm-hmm. ten minutes too long. Like everything in this movie, <laughs> oh, and this is not a long movie. <laughs> Agreed. And this is supposed to be like the sensual scene. Like that's the thing when you've got the sensual scene in a movie, and you're just literally looking at your watch. Guess what? It fucking failed. Okay. Um, Agreed. It, 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 there's nothing sexual about this. It's just awkward. So the two girls, they're in the pool, they got the bikinis on, and they're struggling to get on top of inflatables. That's oh my god, thing. why did they use that take when she like fell off and it she looked fell and so banged her awkward. head? Yeah. And guys, the pool is freezing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah, it's clearly You're freezing. Right <laughs> Sorry, I'm dying. Um but yeah, no, yeah, they get in and they are they're shivering. And it's like- Yeah, it's clearly so cold. Yes. Yeah, and, it was it was a cold miserable. day in Vegas that day. The, yeah. it, well, I bet it was early. I bet it was early Probably. in the morning because it's always cold in the desert, like, you know, at certain times of day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So and then they splash water at each other. They splash water at each other because, hey, it's cool to see two twin sisters. Blood sisters, yeah. You know, Blood I sisters. There's any other kind of twin. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. playfully splashing water against themselves. While a corrupt businessman watches getting a hard on. Um, and yeah, Fine. they like come up out of the water, you know, five minutes later and uh, are standing in front of a greedy, cor- corrupt politician businessman. And then they just start taking their tops off and laughing while holding their boobs. That was so right. weird. They well, just laughed for way too long. Well, they reused the so same creepy. shot. I guarantee this is what happened. Neil's like, all right, now now take off your tops and show your amazing, beautiful nipples. <laughs> and they went, no. <laughs> all no, right, all right. And they finally that. compromised. Can you just cop your boobs? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I was going to wow. say for for the, the role of, of prostitute, I don't know if you'd be cupping your boobs in front of the John. <laughs> That's fair, but the actresses are probably like, uh, we never I get it. This. I get it. I get it. And I get it completely. And honestly, I, I wouldn't want to do any nudity in front of Neil Breen ever. Um, but it, it's just it's a weird fucking scene. And then like they're pouring champagne and the champagne takes too long to pour because he has to use every shot of the champagne pouring. Um, even alternate takes. Well, did and you then, notice when he poured, they poured the champagne? It was from like ten feet too high. And yes, it was, and it's because they shot it on another day, and they did not have a black hand. Yeah, it probably wasn't that it, same guy. Yeah, that's it was John probably said. a white person pouring it, so they had yes. to like make sure the hand wasn't in the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm surprised he didn't just put it in though and be like, "Yeah, no what, one will notice." What surprises pre-season. me is the fact that this woman, woman who has the the fake baby, you know, it took no convincing. To say, yes, you should go whore yourself out for money. To the most violent, blood-filled gang. <laughs> it's like, this, this is, part of the this is your yeah, first I day. I understand how it your was first like, day in the hooking game. And <laughs> I don't understand how it was like a gang, but also the politicians with a capital P. Like, it was very strange. Because the politicians, politicians the are the greatest gang uh, of all. Yeah. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I think the gotcha. gang and the politicians are working together to, like, destroy the Joy. world. The world. Thank you. This seems like an '80s cartoon, doesn't it? Like the oversimplification <laughs> that make people feel good in Reagan's America. Yeah, this yeah. is some Scooby Doo shit. I'm just, I'm waiting for some Skeletor to pop up. I mean, that's, I mean, I guess. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Techno Jesus God Alien is Skeletor. Makes sense. Um, I like to feel evil. <laughs> <laughs> so after this ridiculous scene, um, we get the scene with the homeless wheelchair guy. Which, Lane, you mentioned earlier. I did not mention him. I said that maybe I, that yeah, one chick that was, was like, me. maybe not like the worst. And then John thought I was the oh. devil. And then we cleared it up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, either way, homeless wheelchair guy who has cancer chemo. He just says cancer yeah. chemo, not cancer and using chemo. Just this cancer chemo. He got cancer from using chemotherapy. He's like, yeah. I'm just going to do it in preparation to get mean, cancer. Do we know anything on Earth about the world? And like, does does Neil live among people? No, he just doesn't seem to know how anything works. He just he sells them real houses. Real That's all he does. Yeah. How does he understand anything? He Somebody doesn't. was like, I'm buying a house from this guy multiple times. <laughs> 
Oh. He look, he's got an honest face, I guess. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So, so homeless wheelchair guy, he has a dream. He wants to see the Las Vegas sign up close before he dies of the cancer chemo. Which that's not like the main Las well, Vegas sign. Is well, it? It's just like. I mean, there's a couple Las Vegas signs, aren't there? Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure there's at least two. Um, and I didn't I look think at the it, main one is by Putt Putt, but okay. I, I don't. I when I was out there years ago, I I, I didn't I didn't get a chance to go to the, the. I think the main one's on like Fremont Street, if I remember correctly. Uh, like the you one can't that I remember. Like I know it's way out that, of the way. Yeah. I know the main one's way out of the way. Yeah. Um, but the point is, is that one, and this doesn't make any sense. If you're a homeless wheelchair guy, and you live in Las Vegas, at some point. You would have gotten to see up close the the Las Vegas sign, wouldn't you? Like, yeah, it's like being here in Pittsburgh and being like, I've always wanted to see the T. Are you telling me you haven't accidentally <laughs> found your way there? Well, I don't know. If you have limited mobility, maybe you guys should check your privilege. I don't know if he got I, himself to to the sign. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he did get himself to the sign, which tells me he does have the ability to get to the sign. And, and the sign isn't like so out of the way. That you can't get to it, like it, it just seems like a strange request for a native. Like I, I think for me, I would look at it as like, okay, like the the Hollywood sign, okay, in Los Angeles. That sign I could see. Okay, it's kind of hard to see up close. You can't really get to it. You know, yeah. there's barriers. This has no barriers, and you can clearly tell that there's no barriers because there's a bunch of fucking people around it. Fair, yeah. and the and the thing is, the guy basically got there. He, you know, and like Neil pushes him like the last like five feet. That'd be like if you were on the subway and a pregnant woman came on and you made her stand for two hours and then you gave her your seat because you knew you were getting off the train in two yeah. minutes. Like, you know, it's it's not any great feet like here. Let me push you the remaining four and a half feet <laughs> since well, you already got here on your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what ends up happening, you know, is before John, when you get to that part is the homeless wheelchair guy. It gets close to the sign and then runs over someone's foot or some guy crashes into him. And that causes that guy to get angry and push over the wheelchair guy. Yeah. To push a man Which, in a wheelchair is cancer. What kind, that, what kind of like soulless human being do you have to who be? Who just right? Well, well, that, that tells me that, that Neil wrote that. And who's, yeah, exactly. Who thinks, oh, yes. I need to show someone evil and disgusting. How about they push over a wheelchair person? And that's like, just that's another so, level of bad. One that's just so like basic and doesn't tell us any deeper truths about life. Once no, it just tells me that guy's a piece of shit. Yeah, he writes like a ten-year-old would think. Like, yeah, not somebody who like turns this guy down and says like you can't see the sign because you're crippled and like we don't like people like you here and then maybe like you're just like no that's wrong because they're people too no it has to be a guy who literally pushes him out of his chair right laughs, twirls his mustache and you know, everybody <laughs> just kind of like sees this and does nothing <laughs> to yeah, be fair and everybody's though everybody's just like cool with it immediately to be fair i think that in reality that actually would happen in Vegas, maybe. Yeah. No, not in Vegas. I think in in reality, you'd have maybe like one person who'd go and say, "Hey, that what the fuck are you doing?" Um, but I have seen people when when accidents happen that they'll take out their phone first. So that yeah. that's there. There is a little bit a shred of truth in that. In that, most people unfortunately do not want to get involved. You know, but because of these this action. Space Cyber Jesus yes. comes over and burns a man's eyeballs out of his head. Oh yeah, yeah, that's he, that's also like I'm fighting fire with fire, which is what all Jesuses want, right? I mean, I mean it's true. Like fascism, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he's he's a vigilante madman. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. True. He he uses his fake After Effects hand and uh, causes someone's eyes to bleed. Okay, now we don't know what the bleeding is. If that is, it, it's burning their eyes out or it just causes them to bleed, like have bloody tears. Uh, we don't know. We don't really need to care. But the guy runs away. Um, Guys, these and, movies are warning signs. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then he does what any space techno zombie Jesus uh, god alien would do, and he freezes time. 
in the most oh, yeah. ridiculous he freezes fashion. Time several times. Well, he yeah. he apparently can only freeze people, not cars. Well, you know, you, you don't want to stop the cars. You know, you're gonna burn gas. You know. <laughs> so so let's let's put this in perspective here. If he could only freeze time for people, but not cars, that means the car in that frame has someone in it who's gonna die. <laughs> Could you imagine just losing time like that? Like, you just wake up and you're, like, two miles down the road. Like, holy fuck! Well, I don't think you'd be two miles down the road in Las Vegas if you crash into a car. Because, again, he can't freeze time for vehicles. He can only freeze time for people. Because yeah. so that guy's dead. He just killed another one. It's another one on the Breen list of people That's who right. Killed. Everyone's awful and they all need to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so he, he freezes time and then, yes, as you said, John, he pushes the homeless guy out to the Hollywood sign. Um... And that's cool, I guess. Um, we revisit the homeless guy later in the film uh, who almost gets run over by a car by a bunch of uh, gang people. And Neil stops them. like He saves the homeless guy again and then burns out the gang people's eyes. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he, he horribly <laughs> murders like a whole group of people. And I love how like Neil is so razor thin in his outlook on things because like there's like also people in a truck who like say something rude or cut somebody off and he just drives by and burns their eyes out like he doesn't think that like oh perhaps like a lot of this like violence is caused by like systemic racism and redlining and not having an opportunity to have any other value no. in your life like no no they're just gang members so they're evil so burn their eyes out and kill them this is while psychopaths think well, and yeah. this is like how oversimplification of, of matters go, right? Yes. That's like yeah. that's like a kind of the the way that this whole movie has been is an oversimplification of the human condition and life itself. It, it's almost as if if you asked a kindergartner to a, a deep question, like, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? If you asked a kindergartner that question and you, the response you got would be a Neil Breen film. I mean, I'll give the guy third grade. I'll, I'll give him third, third grade? grade. You'll give him third grade? Yeah, right, John, third grade. Well, I, I keep saying fourth grade intellectualism because I, I think that you have, <laughs> the kid has to have a little bit of rage and a little bit of knowledge how the world works because a kindergarten wouldn't, wouldn't be like, game bangers hooking out chicks. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Unless he's like exactly. the coolest kindergartner ever. Coolest? Is that the word we're going with, John? Is that the I'd hang out with that going? kid. Okay. Jimmy McCool, the cool kid in the corner. Wow. wow. <laughs> Joe Chill, cool, cool, Chili McFreeze. Yeah. Coolest Jim, guy. Jimmy, in the he world. watches the adult YouTube. He doesn't, ah. he doesn't watch YouTube kids. He wow. watches straight up adult YouTube. He's not Dude, watching he's not videos. Kids. He's not he's watching not Fortnite videos. The wire. <laughs> wow. You guys are too much. Yeah. Um, but anyway. But after Neil, this, yeah, Neil it, saves it's, the hooker with a hundred yeah, gold. Does he? Yeah, he does. Um, now the the whole this whole hooker with a heart of gold shit. Um, and then, honestly, towards the end of this, it gets kind of bizarro, convoluted. What I've, everything I've gone up into and yeah. to, until this point has at least had some semblance of a plot. If it had not a for the individual of of events, yeah, yeah, yeah. After, the related events at least. Yeah. At least for me, after the homeless wheelchair guy, and it might also have been because of the fact that I was doing something else while I was watching this, and there were things that I just didn't quite get um, out of the movie. But we we find out that the hooker, one sister, who's like, d we think she's doing it full time, and that's all she is is just a hooker. But no, she's actually an activist. For the environment. What? And she loses her environment job at the solar company. The solar the company. The solar company. Uh, because of the the corrupt politicians trying to defund it. So they because of budget cuts, she loses her part-time gig at the solar company. So now she's talking to her boyfriend who is also in a gang and th and says that she has to go and do hooking full time. Yeah, and he's gonna go like steal a car or whatever. He's gonna steal a car full time. Yeah, yeah, and he goes, they, they he both goes are part time pieces of shit. Yeah, he goes to the gang. And he's like, "Hey, I want to steal cars for you because I'm a bad dude and I can steal cars real good." And they go, "You came onto our turf, ass face," and they kill him. Well, they kill him twice. 
Yeah. So they slit his throat. Okay. That's that's death number one. And then apparently the the the, the girlfriend shows up. We don't know how she gets there. She just shows up and she screams when they pull the cover back and show his dead body. Yeah, the, it's the same scream. It's girl scream twice. Um, and then the one the lead gang member is like this piece of shit pulls out his gun and starts shooting the corpse. Yeah, <laughs> he's defiling and, the corpse. Yeah, I'm, and then he's just looking at the girlfriend like, oh yeah, I did that as she throws up. Yeah, twice After he does this, the same scream three. Oh times. yeah, it's the same scream as always. Yeah, yeah. and. After that, it gets kind of all over the place. The the most unrealistic throw up of all time. I'd like to say, by the way. Yeah, but you can know, you she, kind of, she, she can you guys explain to me what happens after that? Because honestly, all I got is Alien Jesus has sex with the activist girl. I well, John seemed to imply that it wasn't even them having sex. Like, oh, they're well, it was Mormon sex. <clears throat> it was, it was them Mormon standing, sex. lying completely still, missionary. Like, I don't know if it was like some kind of tantric sting sex where like if you just like <laughs> stare at each other long enough in like nine hours you'll come you know oh i, oh. I see what you were saying you were being i see you're being well funny. yeah he's just literally lying on top of her staring daggers in her and but, i've never felt so bad for an actress in my life oh. yeah well, that, she had, that he, couldn't he had to wear the fucking mask too he had to yeah. wear the alien mask so it's oh yeah it's neil breen's naked body because let's, let's be honest here folks he he's didn't naked. wear the like he didn't wear the like the ball cup thing. He's not wearing a, a male merkin. Okay, he's not. He he <laughs> he he, he the is male merkin. He he is he is like well, I'm the director and I need to be naked to get into character because the character is naked. So I'm gonna be naked on top of this girl who is honestly just trying to be an actress. Yeah. I feel I'm bad sorry, for the her. Cock I'm cloth sorry, the got lost in the mail, I'm, so uh, yeah, you're gonna feel my, lost my bare junk against you. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, and uh, yeah, he he's wearing this fucking mask, so it's Neil Breen's naked body wearing an alien mask. I just imagine his genitals is like a demi gorgon's face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh my god! Like it, now, wait, I need it's you to explain this to me. Does his <laughs> penis open into the demi gorgon face like a flower? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably. Like it opens up like the, the octopus flower of death. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and I'm, I'm scared to ask this part, but John, does his penis have that many teeth? Yeah, but they're, they're, there's no meat ripping teeth in his in his genitals. They're okay. All, they're all the smooth kind, like baby's and, teeth. And would like it baby's be that, teeth. Would it be that his asshole's a prolapsed anus that looks like a mind flare? Oh, my. I would imagine so. <laughs> I mean, you got to have a mind flare, right? Yeah, there's got to be a it. mind you flare. You got to have that there. You know, Netflix wow. you want to sponsor the Simmons Psycho Show. You can. Uh, we'll talk about Stranger Things all the time. Um, Greenlight uh, Green Listen, is a show. If Netflix. Dungeons and Dragons wants to sponsor the show, I'm down. John is an excellent Dungeons and Dragons player. Really? He's. Oh my God! You don't even. I've he's never. So I did good. not. I've. Ne- here's the thing. I've never played Dungeons and Dragons. It's so fun. It's pretty neat. It's yeah. so fun, and John has skills for days. It's incredible. Wow. My character is a dirty per- pervert. His name is Moisty Bottom Love. <laughs> What is it's, his name? Moisty Bottom Love. Of course he is. Course it's he incredible. Is. John um, hasn't had to fight in a battle once. He has just like <laughs> used other skills to get out of every single scrap of trouble. It's amazing. It makes me really I happy. I do that with you guys when this quarantine's not. Really, really as I said, I've never played it. And you, honestly, I I should have figured that you folk would be Dungeons and Dra- Dragons people. Um, we, uh, yeah, we were we were uh, invited by a friend to like his group, and uh, I I have not been sorry. It was it's so fun. Awesome. The the Rona did put it on pause. But. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, after this whole thing with the 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 hooker with the harder gold, what happens after the end of it? Because as I said, maybe you guys can help me understand what happens at the end of it. Because I don't. I'm- I'm just as lost as you. I, it basically just turns into the beginning of the movie again where Neil's like, I'm going to give man one more chance. Yeah, yeah I kind of got I kind of got that fish. part, yeah. but I don't know what led to that other than he had sex with the activist slash part time. That was kind of lady it. Lady of the night. And then everybody's on a cross because, you know, classy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah the um the politicians are right. Oh, he killed them all. So they're dead. Yeah. 
And you could tell and the crosses put them on the are crosses. leaning forward because they're just standing on the ground and they have their arms behind it, which is causing it to move forward because they're not actually, you know, crucified. Uh, yeah, they're not. Yeah. I mean, that's probably good that he didn't, like, I don't know, murder anyone, John. Well, they could have. he could have had them build a platform for them to stand on. He wouldn't have, you know, and then they could have wrapped their arms around the top of it and it would have been in any pain, but- you know. I, right. Why are we giving Neil Brain filmmaking tips? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's giving us tips. He gave us a five DVD oh. set. His oh. master class, oh. right? I don't, I don't, I don't want that ever. I don't, I, <laughs> Brian, you got to drink no, next time, buddy. No, I do. I do have to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, apparently because he had sex with the the woman, he now no longer wants to kill all of mankind. Her vagina um, saved us. Her vagina saved us all. Well, don't forget too the the chemo guy. Like he, uh, her baby dropped a toy, and he was like good enough to say, "Hey, your baby dropped a toy." And then oh, Neil I forgot came, about that part. Yeah, the Neil came by and turned him into like Caesar haircut, like man of love. Like he cured his cancer and made him young. He's like, go be with her, make babies. You know? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Like, this woman like turns around and this old man, this old cancer riddled man is now like a 20 some year old guy who gets out of the wheelchair and she's just all like, OK, tell me you <laughs> wouldn't be freaked out by that. Like, that would be weird. Yeah. No, she's just uh, I like, would be oh, I want your out. Caesar haircut boner. Yeah, you know? Caesar haircut I mean, boner. you see an old man and then he's all of a sudden like completely different. Like, that would be very strange. Uh wouldn't yeah. it be amazing? Every old woman you saw, you're like, now nah, I transform you into your hot version of yourself. And she's like, ah, I can do the Charleston again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she says so she'd still have like the old voice. Yeah, well, oh, did yeah you, that would did be you guys ever? Did you guys ever watch the show Upload? It's on Amazon. Uh, uh, is it good? I've seen it. It's ads actually for pretty it. decent. Um, nice. And, and, and there the is a little bit of that, John, in there because. One of the older women in that movie who dies, she's a grandma, and she they the only picture they have to upload her to the virtual world is for, of her when she's like twenty, in like the thirties. Oh wow! So it, and they and her avatar is black and white, so it's oh, the hot so version funny. of the grandma, <laughs> black, black and white. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed with that, Brian. That's yeah. really funny. It, it actually is a pretty good show. Uh, Robbie Amell's in it, so so. Stephen Amell's brother. Oh, okay, that's so, cool. The, the the Green Arrow, which that's cool. The um the creators of The Office are behind that, right? Yeah, yeah, and nice. it's actually pretty decent. Like I, I'm not a big fan nice. of The Office. I'll be the first to say that, but yeah. uh, I do like uh, Upload. It's a good show. Nice. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got about this movie. Yeah, uh, yeah this movie was a it was a taste treat, guys. guys. I have to say, I am surprised that the second movie he made himself Techno Jesus. Doesn't it seem like you build up to Techno Jesus? Well, the fact that he, I feel like he went backwards with Faithful Findings because he's just a man who finds a magic cube in that. Well, one. I think mm-hmm. I think what might have happened is that this might have actually been a little bit too much. For even Breen people. So that's why, you know, Fateful Findings, he decided to kind of scale it back to man against the government. Mm. Because Techno Jesus was too much. I mean, he did find magical powers to heal yeah. himself and stuff. And now, yeah. Right. Then he have a right. magic rock and shit like that. Like, yeah. There's always a fucking childhood. magic rock. Yeah. There's always magic. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. That shit. Yeah. 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 Um, I think he also becomes the techno Jesus in the next one too. pass through Either that. Or, I think actually Hopefully. with pass through, I think he is like a ghost. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I can't, you guys. Oh, I can't believe there's two oh, more. Oh, there, there are. And I then, swear we're going to divorce yet, John. Over, hey guys, over I don't Breen. think we watch any more Neil this calendar year. Yay. I need a break. Like November, <sighs> but you know. I we'll need probably a, be kicking off January. I need like I a hot timeout, yo. Know. I, I think you need some some bad movie that is at least competently made to some degree. I need a GD minute is what I need. Well, Has we, this... we watched Tammy and the T-Rex a few weeks ago. So. That yeah, was we, fun, we though. That was fun. That didn't hurt me physically. That was a fun <laughs> one. That was a fun one. But, but like this one, and it's just, I, I don't know how he has fans. Like I don't get it. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm I'm a fan of his in the same way I'm a fan of Tommy Wiseau and the maker of Birdemic, like because they're yeah. just I I'm a fan of just how awful they are. Right. Right. You know, like, <sighs> I don't think he ha- maybe there are a few people out there that he has legitimate fans for the right reasons. But I think 99 percent of his fans are. I can't wait to see how Neil Breen fucks up his next movie. I guess so. I guess so. But I, it's I like just... it's like wanting to see what the train wreck looks like every time. <sighs> but it's it's so bad. And like as I as you, you know, we've kind of all alluded to you can't really watch these movies straight. You can't just be like, oh, yay! what are you going to do tonight? Not drink anything. Gonna have a, uh, a movie night with the family. Maybe, maybe pop, pop in. I am here. Dot dot dot. Now, no, that doesn't work. That doesn't work because your family will leave you and then light your house on fire. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna cozy up in bed with a cu- warm cup of tea. Watch. Uh, no one watches. Has a warm cup of tea. Watch. Dot dot dot. Now. <laughs> yeah, that's never a thing. Yeah. Nope. Oh. This is the movie I go to sleep at night too. <laughs> oh, this is God. my comfort movie. This is the movie that leads to night terrors. Okay, let's be honest <laughs> it's here. It's so bad. Um, final thoughts on this one, guys. Well, here, here's my question to you guys. Okay, you as got questions. Fi- as okay. my final thought. Okay. Um, Springer style. No. Um, the fourth <laughs> movie. When we get to it, will it be his best? Which is with an asterisk, or <laughs> is it going to be even worse than the first three that we've seen? Uh, Lane, you want to start with that one? I think, I think it's going to just be the same. Like, I think it's going to be more of the same. I um, think I'm going to say he gets a little better, just a little better. Okay. I think it, the fourth one will be his best film, but that's still going to be the worst movie he ever made compared, except for his other. Three. I just don't think he learns anything when he makes new movies. I I don't think that his content changes. His message never changes. I just think he retreads all the same tired stuff over and over again. I agree. I I think the only thing that gets better, and I and I this is kind of cheating because I saw the trailer for Pass Through. Um, I I I think his visual effects get slightly better. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Because like he's got clones and shit like that. Like like <laughs> no you know, there's, more there's, brains. There's, no. there's like a, I, well, I think in that one there's there's literally a, a body like an alien thing co- and takes over Neil Brain's body, which no, big shocker I there. don't need more um, brain. But but it's it's like I think the effects get a little bit better for him. <laughs> and when oh I mean better for God. him, I mean it would be incredibly worse for anyone else. Like, like if you're talking about bargain bin iMovie effects, it's worse than that. But for Neil Breen, that's like you know five star Hollywood budget level. No. Um, so I think that might be the only thing. I I think the story structure and everything else will probably be the same because you know I don't think Neil Breen as you know Lane you kind of mentioned I don't I don't think he takes advice. From anybody? Yeah, I don't think there's anywhere for him to go as a filmmaker. He doesn't seem interested in growing or changing as a human being. Well, and yeah, like, like perfect and infallible. Why would you change? Exactly. But, but like most people, when they want to get into filmmaking, even if you don't want to go to film school, which that's fine. Okay, there are pros and cons to film school right off the bat. I mean, the one con is the cost. Uh, sure. One pro is the networking. But that's not to say that you you can't learn stuff without paying for it like, like you can buy books there yeah. are countless books There's on a lot of good books out there th- yeah, i have really a lot good, of them really so me too i have i have a bunch of them too really solid books out there and you know you, do, online, do youtube tutorials so, yeah. and mm-hmm. everything you know there is so much material out there on how to learn filmmaking that there's really no excuse for this other than a combination of uh, pride in your lack of abilities uh, and just laziness, you know, just pure and utter laziness. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've yeah. known people who, who've, who've thrown themselves into making films and they, they make a lot of mistakes, but you know what the one key thing is when they come out of it, you know, like I, I've known people who've said, I'm going to go make a feature and they go make a feature and then it's a, an utter catastrophe because 
they weren't prepared for it. And right. then they come back at it and they're like, you know what? That was the greatest learning experience ever because I got to see all the problems that can happen without planning. So the next movie they make is like a 20 times better because of the fact yeah. that they realized that making that feature, that first feature that was a shit show was actually the learning that they needed to go through. Sometimes the best mm-hmm. thing that can happen to a filmmaker is failure. Oh, yeah. 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 Is yeah. just making a bad movie. But when oh, you yeah. don't know you failed like Neil. There's that's nowhere. the thing. I don't yep. I don't think the man knows that his movies are failures. I don't think that he looks at them as, as failures. He looks at them as, these are my babies and my children. Look at mm-hmm. all my children. Um, I wish he numbered them like Tarantino, the third film from Neil Breen. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he would stop making movies like Tar- <laughs> Tarantino. Only instead of it being 10, we, we just go back to one and say retroactively, stop making these movies. Well, great. Brian, you say that like, you know... If, about going to film school, you know what one of his uh, pieces of advice is in his um, in his like how to make a movie thing, right? What he he says: spend like twenty years like in the real like world, making tons of money so you can finance your movies. So he's basically telling you have an actual career till you're about fifty, and then make all your movies like he does. No, that's okay. First of all, first of all, he here's the thing I don't get about Neil Breen. He obviously does have some money, okay, because he can afford a pool. Why not, instead of making your films, you just act as the producer for these movies? Because I think because everybody wants to be the director, right? Like, you know, it, mm-hmm. it, but you know, when you have an ego like him, like a lot of people, <laughs> they go to film school and you can specialize in a lot of things like, oh, I want to do. Yeah, I want to do producing. I want to do audio. I, you know, I want to do right. this. I want to do that. But like when you're when you're an ego stroking guy like Neil, like I'm the director, I'm the writer, I'm the star. Like this is my vision. You but know, what I don't not gonna what I don't get Neil. is that that honestly, Neil would be such a better producer than a director any day. Because obviously he knows how to build a fan base. He knows how to get butts and seats. Okay, whenever yeah. he's done any screenings of his piece of shit films, um, they've sold out. Okay, but I don't think there would be an audience if there was somebody competent making the you know this movie because they would probably revamp the script so it sounded like how people talk. You know, and then oh, they would have oh. directed it competently. And I don't think anybody would want to see it because it would just be a bad movie. It wouldn't be so amazingly fun because it's one of the worst movies ever made but i just i just don't understand it because i'm like neil breen could easily be the money person behind movies and still be in the film industry like he doesn't have to direct shit because he's not good at it like you have the money though like oh i get what you're saying john that honestly if you didn't have uh neil breen directing you wouldn't have a neil breen film and the neil breen film wouldn't have a fan base it's it's like a uh, uh, self fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, basically. Oh, I hate these movies. <laughs> so <laughs> to wrap this up, uh, that's that's I am here. Dot dot dot. Now, I'd say go and buy it, but honestly, you can. Don't give this dude money. I don't know do if it. I'd give this dude money. No. Check out Etsy. Like, go go to Etsy <laughs> and uh, put in Neil Breen. That's how I did it because, like, th- the way I have all of his movies, he makes he made no money off of me, which I'm so happy about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I usually like to say go support the filmmaker, but honestly, I need Fuck this guy. I, I just I can't stand him. I can't stand him as a person. I can't. He's the worst. He's the worst. He's the worst. Oh, okay. Uh, John, where can I find you at on the Twitter machine? I am part of all technology. <laughs> <laughs> the Unreal J Wolves. Lane? You can find me at I ruptured my brain at, no, just kidding, uh, at LA underscore Croft. And you can find me at Techno Jesus Zombie God Alien. <laughs> or you can find me at. Oh, Brian is that why Cunnington. that was taken? You got yeah. it first. <laughs> yeah, I, I was the first. I got it first. Uh, you can find me at Brian Cunnington on the, on the Psycho Show page. Be sure to like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Psycho Show. You can also find us on the Epicast Network at epicastnetwork.com. If you have a favorite movie or question you want to throw away or you too want to talk to us because you're Neil Breen and 
you're tired of us trashing your films and you want to come on the show. Dude, and anytime. stand up for yourself. Yeah. Um, come on the show, buddy. Anytime. You contact us at cinemapsychoshow.com. Fabulous. And be sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and iTunes, and we will see you next time. Oh, man, I can't believe Neil Breen sold me this dilapidated money pit. Damn you, Neil.